trial and cross is in our way. But the utter the battle, the sweeter the victory. So trial and cross is in our way. But the utter the battle, the sweeter the victory. Blessings and welcome for to reasonings. Right here at your life. And we are out in the gardens, right up at Hope Gardens, right here in um, Papine, yeah, Kingston, Jamaica. I'm your host, um, the Great Howl, in the presence of my co-host, Brother Raman Singh. Perfect, Perfect love. <laughs> Perfect love. love. So, Brother Singh, while we, we make this a new location, you know, and, you know, settling into the first video, <laughs> we realize that we always say hi to the battle suite of the victory as we start, you know, before one or two mosquitoes was around. But as you just set up everything and, you know, I put on my mic and, and you went and you got ready as you turn and come back around. A <laughs> host of mosquitoes just raised themselves up in unrighteousness against us. But they are tied back to the sweet hallelujah, the victory in you have of him. Yes, pardon us. So we're going to be currently speaking on perseverance in the spirit of God. And that's a topic that's very much more than a topic and is very dear to my heart and to my experience because in the previous video I was one of the previous videos I was talking about some of the difficulties I have been encountering on the current experience of you know doing things of the faith and of my experience and what was interesting about it is as I was saying to you I have recognized a pattern that was happening similar to a point when I was about to go to a different level of my awareness in the faith and I remember it was a lot of stuff just going awry, Hollywood was going crazy. And I, to be honest, wasn't always at that time in the state of mind to just pray about it, think it through, relax and watch it become what, you know, I think it ought to be. I was very much nervous, concerned, angry, distracted, disoriented and disorienting in my behavior because when the trials would come, when the tribulations would come, when things would happen in my life that were specific to me. Remember I said that what I recognize is that there's a spiteful spirit that governs this thing and this spite usually comes because you have declared an allegiance to the true and living God. That's why I say it's perseverance in the spirit of God because usually you might say, I might say, because I can remember those occasions when I was saying that. When I was just going through the world as it was, and I would go into these altercations that were always taking so much energy from me, and I wasn't gaining anything from it but conflict and you know, anger and a lot of withdrawal. The moment I, 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 well, I mean, at that time I was, um, I was overwhelmed by it. I had nothing. I didn't know what to do, how to do, or when to do anything. The long and short of it is when I when I started coming into the kingdom now and I made that decision I realized that all of that stuff that I was going through increased hallelujah like like triple fold hallelujah and one of the, the, the triple fold increases was anxiety beyond measure I mean rather sing when I talk about hallelujah the regular anxiety and I think I think this is why this video started out this way because it is something that I'm gonna pour into it whether or not the enemy likes it hallelujah or not and I'm gonna focus the anxiety was so terrible. I was paranoid about several things because the enemy was in my ears, the enemy was in my attitude, the enemy was in my behavior, the enemy was in the relationships, uh, the broken relationships, it was in the family, it was in the community, it was in the conversation, the enemy was everywhere. Resistance, negativity, blockages, confrontation, clashes, resistance, negativity fighting against, resisting against. It was like everything was like a trial and a tribulation. Finances were always in turmoil. Relationship in turmoil, state of mind in turmoil. I couldn't dress like how I was feeling because I couldn't afford it. I couldn't eat the way I, I, I wanted because I couldn't afford it. There was so much distractions late at night, unable to come home from those late night shows. And I was just out there on the street like a vagrant, like a vagabond. You know what I mean? The same clothes are days upon days upon days upon days. This was some of the hardest experiences I had faced and the opportunity came for me to switch sides early on because they were trying to get me back into the kingdom 
of the darkness and trying to promise me things when I came out of darkness, right? Because see how life was, it was difficult, but it was never near like this. There was things about it that was hard, but for some reason, some friend in the darkness would have been there for me, yeah? Male or female would have just been there in the nick of time, and so there was something about the darkness that seemed like it was a brotherhood or a sisterhood or something genuine, like it was supportive. But the moment I said, I'm not going with that anymore. It's like it, its negativity was compounded 10,000 times. And everywhere I turned was a problem. And so the, for the first time, the essence of losing it came to me. Like previously, previously people usually talk that over me, brother Singh, and say, well, you sound like a crazy person. You could be a crazy person. But during those moments of choosing Yeshua, it's like I could have gone crazy if it wasn't for the will, hallelujah, of the most I got. Because they tried off on me several times because the stuff I had to resist in my mind. How I felt bad feelings walking out of my house. It's like a trial to get out of the house. To just get things right to get out of the house. And there was almost always something left. Almost always I'd walk down the hill. Realize I, I, I left my money. But two minutes before I left, I was saying, yeah, I'm going to put my money in my pocket. And I didn't have much money, but I left it. I had to go back up constantly, just circles of no completion. That's worthlessness. And for a long time, I just felt like, what is the purpose of being saved? And this was going to be, hallelujah, my reality. Worse than before. People now avoid me that never avoided me before, right? Behaviors that I used to have that used to grant me power is no longer granting me power. I used to get up in a tire. You know me some other time, brother. See, I used to get up in a tire and I'm done bonfire. I'm done blaze and go on. Something change. All of a sudden, no, I don't have that passion anymore. I don't have that anger, that rage anymore. And I felt alone, left out. And brother, sisters, let me tell you something. Through those worst moments, we don't know how when it really started changing. But I just know, the night I met a few people that were strong in their spirituality. And in the moments where I felt low, I didn't have to call them. Their spirit, hallelujah, I have to be clear. I didn't call them on a phone, or they called me up on a phone. Their spirit became present in my reality and started praying with me, rebuking demons with me. Yeah, when people attack me in my spirit and emotion, I think it was good spirit speaking to me, it's bad spirit. Yeah, and later on, I find out, and brother, it was hell. I didn't look good in my face. Yeah, Lynn should say, my face changed. You know, sometimes it said, but like something they on you, I just look drained. My skin tone got just patchy, blotchy. Just the worst experiences, but I mean, just get like a, a walking dead. But this was after, hallelujah, I said, Yeshua Mashiach. Do you understand what I'm saying to you? It's not like this was before. Before I went through some stuff and I've been through some crazy, but this was after. And it looked like you made the wrong decision. Hallelujah. That's what it looked like. It looked like that. But brother, as I said, I don't know where along that path, but some of the strength and the support of my brethren and my sisters in the spirit encourage me, encourage me. And then somewhere along the line, this is the point I'm going to make before I move to Brother Singh. Somewhere along the line one day, and I'm going to tell you the experience that I had to do to break it, to break this control. But before I say that, my mind reached a point where it said, all of this that is seeming like 10,000 pounds of weight on your head, in your um, chakrams going down your back and your shoulder, Something said to me, if you think the right way, you can move it. You can remove it, hallelujah, by the right thoughts. And I couldn't resist that word, that moment. That word showed me that I was like a wuss. I was broken down by fear and confusion. So instead of being strong, I just was like going like this. Oh my God, Whoa, what is this? What is this, another demon? Another this? Oh, what is another? You know, something was saying, no. Speak against it. Stand up to it. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. Even though I didn't know how to. I had no knowledge. No matter what I was learning metaphysically about mind. And I was just in a humble spirit like a child. I said stand up to that. I felt like I tried to stand up. And so some of these hard moments. I'm not going to tell people that I started saying beautiful things. Some of these hard moments where I'd feel that when the tongues didn't come. I would cuss. But cuss with a motive like. Like I said, get away from me, Satan. You, I mean, I'm not pretend like I'm somebody. You're dirty, filthy, liar, and wicked, drug, and old hater. And, you know, I would go down, pan, and that would give me a confidence to realize that, hey, 
I can actually do something. After a little while, I would feel a little bit more empowered, but I mustn't carry it too long. Because when I carried it too long, it would empty me back off the momentum again. So I learned it was a little assertiveness that you needed, not to lambast anything and then you yourself get caught in darkness. But profess truth and let it out and clear the air. Brother Singh. Yes, but I'm here to all. Man, you were telling me your testimony. We are compelled to tell Michael's testimony as well, you know? So, before finding Christ, you know, uh -huh. me myself in the darkness, we have different little powers, you know, reading people's mind and uh -huh. it's like extra super esoteric knowledge. Easy to get, you know, because you don't know what you ask for is what you get, you know. Absolutely. And once you're dead deep in you know, something, you know, so I get more and more of that, you know. True that. So, and I taught myself as God, you know. I said, I am God on earth, walking in flesh. You know, and having that mentality, people start worship me. I'ma take the worship because in my mind, me I say, yeah, me a God. And me I say, them people are special for no. Mm -hmm. But uh, upon finding Christ, now me I realize there are people in darkness, mm -hmm. in high ranking in darkness that can see in the spiritual world. They must say, oh, he's a God for two. And they just invoke more of that spirit, uh -huh. you know? So finding Christ is like all of that just gone. Take away all of that. And him say, humble yourself from one. You know, cause from read say Moses, one of the meekest man. And I say, yo, oh, research meekness. And say, man, have a practice meekness, humble, you know. So from this, so we start practice meekness, you know. And may I find out just Lego certain things of the world, and then when I take on Christ, it's a whole different reality. Because we just drop everything. All the work when we used to do stop that because we they promote the devil's work before, you know, Rastafari culture, but from a worship silasi angle, uh -huh. you know. And we have to say, no, I'm going to have to stop this because my spirit no feel good with it. Hallelujah. Because we they do it, you know, but we no feel good yeah. doing it. And we get money and we still no feel good. We have to say, no, I'm going to. God put in on my heart to say, stop this, Ramon. And he must say, who are help people like you, Ramon? <laughs> you know? That he must say, no. mm -hmm. my reason with me, you know? yes. through my conscience and everything, you know. And the new peace and love what I find. Yes. He must say, who are help people like me, like us? Yes. <laughs> and I say, look and say, boy. Not much, you know. And him, him put it on my heart to join the army. Uh -huh. You know, join the resistance, you know. Okay. <laughs> yeah. We say, well, it's a mission, but at that in the heart for do. And that, and that make the soul feel good. Yes. You yes. know? Yes, Hallelujah. If anything else me are doing on earth, it might have make money, you know. But my soul no feel good. My heart no feel good. I can't do any other work. I can't me have so much skills and talent. This is true. But if I don't have God at the center of everything I do, my heart no go feel good. So I make sure I say I follow what please God. Yes. And He please me. Yes. yes. You know? And that me I set my life in motion for do. And me I persevere upon that chat there. Yes. And Father, him bring me through many situations. 
sometimes me dey on the ground, you know, I sleep on mattress, on anti ground. And him said, no, oh, him step me up every little time. Him step me up to a next level. Because him give you the blessings, you know. Uh -huh. And him see what we do with the blessings. We have to give thanks to the blessings. Absolutely. Cherish the blessings. <laughs> Love the blessings what God bless you with. Every good gift is from the Father. Absolutely. You see me? So when me do get my little blessings from the Father, I take it, you know, and I give thanks after Father. It might seem small to our next man, but right now, this is the best thing yes. for me right now. Yes. Thank your Father. Yes. Yes. I'm going to give thanks. You see yes. me? Yes. Me I'm a little rusty car. If somebody see my car and see it rusty, they would have said, Man, Raman, Jano, your car rusty, man. <laughs> you need to fix it up, you know. But me have to give thanks because me fix up the mechanical part of it. Yes, you know, I mean, I have money for you to spend on fix up body panels and paint over. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. we have to feed my children. Yes, sir. We have to look at baby in yard. We have to buy diaper, mm -hmm. wipes. Yes. I have to persevere and go to. Yes. Every little month, I say, all right. We can fix a little thing on the car. Just put and say, oh, all right. Our next little step yes. completed. Yes. You know? I'm going to give thanks to my little rusty car. You know, people might see it and shake them head. You know? Yes. But me see it and say, Father, thank you for the blessings I am on. See it, make me reach Kingston. Uh, I'll link up my brother. See we can do a video. <coughs> you can travel anywhere in the island. Yes. yes with sir. the little rusty car. Yes, sir. You know? I just appearance. Yes. But the mechanical side, it a drive good. Yes. I'm going to give thanks. You see me? I may give me give thanks even for the rust because it, if it a teach me, to uh -huh. say all right, we're gonna learn how to take care of rust, pan care, and yeah, fix me. them thing there. I never did that before, yes. so it's gonna be a new experience to me. Yes. You know, so I give God thanks for every experience, yes. every little journey we go through. Cause what me learn, you know, there's no experience that is not valuable. That is true too, you know. Every single experience we have, whether good, bad, seem like nothing, seem like everything. Hallelujah. Every experience is there to teach us something. A lesson is in the experience. True that. As the father said, there's a time for everything. Yes. And we have to recognize the times, you see me? True. So we have to realize that no matter what time it's in, Yes. Whether it be hard time, good time, whatever time, persevere, yes. go through. Yes. We have the mission for do. We are doing the mission, whether no matter the we the weather. Yes. <laughs> no the matter the yeah, no matter what is happening around us. As me, that said, the weather or the storm mm -hmm. or the calm. Mm -hmm. No matter. Mm -hmm. Have to persevere. Keep your mind upon the most high and continue to do him well. You Absolutely. know? Righteousness come first in all things. You know, Brother Singh, you know, we have to kind of develop the trust in the most high to be able to kind of start build that perseverant spirit that is pursuant to devotion. We have to start with that connection to the Most High. First, we have to acknowledge that there is a God, a Supreme, that we can go to, and in knowing that there's a Supreme that we can go to, and in, in going and engaging with that Supreme, and trusting the engagement, yeah? Suffering ourselves to go beyond the knowledge we've had of this earth, its implication and our experience of it, to engage the Most High and be able to have real-time communication with God through the heart through the soul, through the mind, through true desire. When that is connected in a person and the, the environment around, just like the world who is against the word of God, his spirit and his son, they have a rejection of a soul when a soul begins to put its trust in the Most High and not in them. And so a spiteful spirit arises and a lot of believers, a lot of followers of Yeshua Mashiach 
finally something to them that even though things were hard, when you start calling his name, avenues started closing down. Maybe we would have heard how organized the world is with the seeds of the serpent, but it doesn't become that real to us until you start being able to see in the spirit and being able to discern things from a spiritual perspective, you begin to see how it is that things have come to be the way they are and how it is maintained. You begin to realize that there's a spiritual system that is above, beyond the material, monetary system that governs material and monetary outcomes. And this spiritual system is run in the higher levels, the principalities and the powers of darkness, the Luciferian system. And so when a person, no matter where you are in life, begins to drift away from it because now you become aware, maybe you're petitioning God, maybe your heart is changing because of just being um, able to emit more good aura vibration through desire and outcomes, you begin to grow in your spirituality closer to God and you now begin to see how things are. The moment you begin to see how things are, your behaviors will change. Those changing behavior is going to reflect negatively in a system that needs that behavior to be controlled. That needs, hallelujah, that behavior to be contained. So the moment now you begin to come out of your containment zone and your containment zone out state of mind, and now you're zoning in on reality, critically thinking, analyzing reality, um, especially, again, if you are carrying the frequency of the divine in you, that means that you've got a faith that is directing the reason why you're searching reality in this manner, the wool from your eye begins to remove the scales fall away. And because the scales fall away, the enemy sees now that when you speak, when you act, you will awake others, awake others, inspire them likewise to awake and remove the scales from their eyes. So you might be an individual saying, previously, none of this didn't happen. I am nobody, but now, you've made a decision that will affect everybody because the enemy don't know if it's through your word, through your heart, the Lord is going to open up a healing stream for his hurting people. And so that is why once a person is really saved in the kingdom, it is almost impossible for them not to serve the kingdom. So this perseverance begins to develop now because you realize that you're now being attacked specifically because of Yeshua. We are healed by his stripes right but it's because of him while we are being um, um, put through the tribulation <laughs> let me just slow down it, it, it is through our devotion to his way to his word to his kingdom to at least transforming our lives from the chaos we're in in the darkness we're in it's because of that choice right so for his, his sake we are being persecuted we're being oppressed and when you begin to see that now, it begins to become very clear to you that you cannot have a feeble state of mind. The heaviness, the brokenness, you have to begin to pray against it. Grow, I don't want to use that term, but grow courage. Grow in courage. Be encouraged by the Holy Spirit to stand up and face your fears. Face the enemy head on because you don't know the limit. You do not know the limitations of your own ability. You might not know your own ability, but equally you do not know the limitations of your ability. So you cannot say that you cannot resist this enemy. Though this enemy is telling you lies to make you feel like you're worthless, there's no purpose in completing college, there's no purpose in completing school, there's no purpose in staying by your mother's place, there's no purpose by helping your father, there's no purpose for helping this, this, this 13 year old, there's no purpose in helping this 60 year old man, there's no purpose for you moving um, 20 miles away to go into this shabby old town. But there is something that is deeper than what is in the average mind or what is obviously visible to the world. There's something deeper that drives your spirit, right? And that calling on your heart, that word in your spirit is a word of transformation, is a word of healing, that your life has more meaning. You are going to affect more people than you previously was aware of. And even though you think you're isolated, in just this little bubble, there's a reason why the enemy is attacking you. Because each open vessel is bringing the fullness of the Most High, if it's willing, unto its people. And this is very important. So when you're being crushed, and you're being resisted, and again, the lies is being told against you, and people are trying to discourage you from what you know in your heart you ought to do, you can stand up, pray more about it, make up your mind and declare 
that you're not going to run because if you run, you start a tradition and a pattern of running from your situations, running from your issues. But if you make a stance, you make a pattern of being able to stand up, face your issues and deal with it because when you're able to go through issues knowing that you have the presence of the Most High with you, to add confidence and competence to your thoughts and to your abilities and to your activities, then you can overcome these things. But at first, when you're being crushed just because you choose righteousness, when you're being afflicted just because you do not want to go with the old ways you used to go with, the old behaviors, you don't want to hang out at the same spot, when you're being crushed just because of that, literally, you're being crushed. I'm not speaking figuratively. Your whole life force is being taken, hallelujah, out of you. And you're so broken. Pray. Pray. If it's the one power of will you have expressed, sit up in your bed, brother. Sit up, hallelujah, in your bed, sister. And pray with conviction. Don't be lying back. Oh, Lord, why is this happening to me every time I try to call your name? Every time I try to read the Bible, I'm getting dizzy. Persevere. Stand up and fight. Let the enemy know that each time that they're going to attack you, it's going to be a fight. Yes, man, it's starting to come in the throat now. It's going to be a fight. You're not going to inhibit me and stop me. I know you're going to do what you do. So now, I'm not going to act naive anymore. So this is perseverance speaking now. I'm not going to act naive like, Oh, Brother Singh, why is my throat acting this way? Why are these mosquitoes? Why were they here? I'm not going to act naive anymore. I'm going to know why they're here. And I'm yet going to, hallelujah, persevere. Fear, though they're there. I know what they're trying to do. I know what their intentions are. I know who sent them there. But yet, because I know, I'm not going to let anger get the best of me. I'm not going to let a loose-minded mouth and lip get the better of me. I'm going to be coordinated, competent, and accurate, discerning in my thoughts, in my behaviors, in my activities. I will, through the Spirit of the Most, I persevere against my enemies, my detractors, and the spirit of Lucifer. I will persevere, hallelujah, in the Spirit of God because He is sovereign and eternal and cannot be overcome or contained by the spirit of the enemy. And therein is my sovereignty. So I'm going to persevere because it is my right, our right, to stand up for ourselves and declare with mind, body, and spirit, our allegiance and our activity in the living God. Brother Singh. Hallelujah. Yes, Brother Gato. Man, over the years, after finding Christ, I just grew up in the spirit and more appreciation for life. You know, before Christ, you know, I never really appreciate life, you know. But Christ opened my eyes. Hallelujah. I appreciate every little thing, mm -hmm. you know. Even the bad things, you know. Mm -hmm. I appreciate even the bad things. Can I teach my lessons? You know. <laughs> so when something happens, the first thing come to my mind is. What is supposed to teach my father? You know? And the father will reveal to me. I will say, Oh, father, thank you for the teaching. You know? Whether it even be my mistake, uh -huh. I learn from a mistake and make sure I say, try not to do that again. You know? Learn from all mistakes. Because we're not perfect, you know? Uh -huh. But when it do happen, we have a reason with, him, with self and with the father. You know, take time out. Because we're so busy more time and captivated with the flashy, you know, thing in the hand. True. You know? True. <laughs> with more time, we're not even just take a pause and just take a deep breath and just talk to the Father. And even just think about life and think True. about things, you know. True. True. The, the world that we're living in now captivates the mind, man. The technology captivate your mind. So sometimes we not even remember say we're supposed to depend on a child and a persevere in certain things. Certain times we've gone so far from God. We have to remember say man 
the spirit not happy. In your spirit, now go happy. Because we now persevere upon the trod to righteousness and upon the trod to heaven. Yes. We now persevere. We get the distractions more time. You know? Because evil speaking personally, you know. One day, mother, like, just now watch some videos and, you know, like, me, I learn things, you know. Uh -huh. But my heart just feel away, and my spirit feel away, and I say, John, we need some God. Uh -huh. We need some righteousness. We need some something I'm missing right now. Yes. You know? All this learning, learning, well done, you yes. know? True that. Hallelujah. I need me, not, me have to put a little nice Christian music and start lift up my spirit, man, you know? Yeah. And you know, take in a little reasoning. Cause sometimes watch the next thing, what you name? Lion, what you know? Lion of Judah. Lion of Judah, you know? Yes. Sometimes he come with some nice videos and I say, I take a little motivation, you know? And lift up back my spirit. Yes. yes. <laughs> you know? Because if you don't remember good, you not even remember why you're there. And what you're supposed to do and I persevere towards. True that. <laughs> we just get distracted by so much things. You have to say, hold well, on the Father, man. Focus your mind for persevere mm -hmm. in the right direction. True that. True that. You know, keep the goal in mind, which is heaven and bringing heaven to others. Yes. <laughs> yes. yes. And that's the goal, you know. You know, walking with righteousness. Spread the love of Christ. Share the good news. Yes. You know, as every Christian, you know, uh -huh. every follower of the Mosai. Yes. Because them know this good news. Uh -huh. And news, you know, yes, that means that it's supposed to spread. Yes, yes, yes. So, our mission of persevere in spreading the good news. Absolutely. Hallelujah. Whether you're a banker or somewhere, it no matter. Mm -hmm. Just share a little goodness and righteousness with your co-worker. Yes. When them observe your life, them, them should have want to have what you have. Mm -hmm. And say, man, what you have? You're going to tell them about Christ. Mm -hmm. Christ will have, man. You know? Them will see the love and kindness what you are portrayed to them and others. Yes. For them say, no man, what you do? For make you so nice and kind and peaceful and loving and thoughtful. <laughs> they need that. You know? Yes. And you say, I got a Christ. Yes. And then you can't just tell somebody good news and leave them alone. Mm -hmm. You have to have a little discipleship. You have to share and experience it, right? Yeah, guide them. Spirit and truth. In the way. Mm -hmm. You can't just Make give sure them the thing. Them. Yes. Like you give them the ingredients and say, all right, go and go cook now. Yeah, <laughs> no, you have to teach them how to cook, yes. how to cut the ingredients, you know? Yes. How to portion it. Yes. You have to teach them many things. Yeah. For them get the up. overstanding of start cooking themselves. True. You see and me? serving. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Hospitality. Yeah. So, we can't just tell a good news to somebody, so I just leave them alone, you know? Mm -hmm. Collect them number, check up on them. More time, see if them good, you know. Help them have little studies sometime. Absolutely, because like I said, for those friends who literally would come in spirit and also would gather physically, I think I forgot to mention that. But the essence of them gathering as well as being there in spirit, as well as calling at different points as well too. In the low moments after my transition, obviously that's one of the greatest foundation apart from the spirit of the Most High God that had lifted me up. Because one of the, the most um, solid experiences inside my psyche that I can remember, and I, and I have to use this because the Spirit is on me, you've got to give them a strong example of some way in which you persevere. I told them the experience of my perseverance and what caused me to have to persevere in the Spirit of God. But I haven't given them an example of how I had to persevere. And this is an example. I think this was about 2000 and... Um, 13, so it was still close after my awakening, right? So I still had a lot of the fear and the trepidation, but God was in me from 2011. So, you know, 2013 is two years after my saving. So I still was transitioning into having the way of life that was solid in my faith, drawing confidence from my faith, assuredness from my faith, and from God 
in the experience of life itself. It was coming together, but it wasn't there. So I was working on a commercial. It was 2012, I remember. It was Red Stripe commercial. Um, the Red Stripe 2012 commercial I talked about the future in Jamaica in the year 2062 when it would be 100 years old. And they had me in that uh, the future us, you know, with my Mohawk, which was the first Ross on major network TV or anything that had a Mohawk. Because, you know, you had to literally do the hair sign. It was an epic Mohawk. Anyway, so that ad I did right, 2012, and it was really good, and I was like, yeah, you know, got some money in my pocket, and a place, I, was, I thought, amongst the entertainment industry that I, I am of, but remember, I was losing out years before just going through so much crazy stuff, and so I knew the Lord was doing this for me. Anyway, so I do the ad now, and uh, I think it was Liquid Light Agency, and I, um, they pay you months after. So we get our call, or a check is ready, but about three days before I, I got the call, no, the day actually, hallelujah, before I got the call that my check was ready, for some strange reason, I just came down, hallelujah, with this amazingly strong fever that everyone was saying around me was dengue. I just literally started roasting in fever, right? I think it was a Wednesday I got the fever. I was roasting in the fever and I was like, oh my God, I'm a... You know, I felt literally like it was one of those really life and death situations. Like, I felt really weak and I had no money. And I, I'm, I'm very independent, so I didn't want to lay on my, 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 my family too much. So, you know, my girlfriend was worried at the time very, very, very much, you know. And I told her, you know, okay, um, she said she's going to come up. But I was like, honey, don't really come up, you know, because, you know, I'm going to do this. Anyway, she came up that day and she encouraged me. And I said, you know what, tomorrow I'm going to go get my check. Right? No, so yeah, yeah, so no, the day, no, the Thursday, sorry, no, so the Thursday, no, I got the call that, hey, your check is ready, right? So, on the day of the Thursday, I was actually, was there the Wednesday, I was motivated, so I said, you know what, you know me, I'll get my check tomorrow, just a Friday, so you know me, I'll go for my check. But I felt like I was dying, roasting with fever, really, 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 really sick, you know? and I said, well, with my check, I'm going to buy myself some fruit, rich in vitamin C, I mean, I'm tell myself all the things I was going to do when I go and cash my check. Something is like, you're dead before you go cash, hallelujah, that check there, right? A doctor, you have to go go. But something in me was saying, I was fine Monday, Tuesday, why all of a sudden on Wednesday, I just got sick unbelievably, just roasting with fever, right? And then by the next day, they call me to tell me, oh, your check is ready, hallelujah. I'm like, no man, something don't want me to have this money. And I can't go and buy something for myself, even go get the medical stuff more. The pressure of my girlfriend, which I'm already doing so much, so it wasn't necessary, hallelujah, to do that. You understand? I'm like, I'm going to cash my check. Something is saying, yeah. I should have some people in the background say, yeah, okay, Joe, we're going to do this. I must die, but I'm going to do it. So the morning, I'm all excited now. Though feeling sick, I'm going to do this. I get myself dressed. I was still feeling like really terrible, but I started making my way down the hill, right? Made my way down the hill. Came to half a tree, you understand me? And uh, to the money I had, I, I, I didn't have money to take a taxi from half a tree, you know, up to Liquid Light Agency, which was at a uh, marketplace, across the marketplace. And uh, Yellow Pages Complex, I said, okay, I'm gonna have to walk. And that would take me like normally, like maybe 10 minutes. That probably took me like 25 minutes. I had to really walk, you know, slow. So anyway, I reached up there, collected my check. And you see the moment I begin to turn through that door, brother, see, a heavy feeling start come, hallelujah, over me. And the voice returned to me, you're going to dead. You need to go to the hospital. You're going to dead. You're going to dead. And something in me kept saying, you know, cash my check. I'm going to cash my check. I'm going to cash my check. I'm going for my money, right? I'm going to cash my check. So you're going to die. You're going to die. You're going to dead. I ever step me, I say, eh, watch and I say, who's going to die? Anyway, I struggled all the way back down to the bank, because the bank was... Um, we had Gyps Gummies, it was, I think it was a, uh, I think it was a CIBC bank I think at the time, so I made it down to that bank, made it into the bank, there was a line, I think there was about six or seven people in front of me, but I feel like I was dead, no, I literally feel like I was going to keel over, but something in me said, nope, I'm going to stand up, so a, a good spirit, because I, I definitely knew this spirit was a good spirit, hallelujah said to me. I think you should tell somebody in the bank that you're not feeling well and they would give you a chance to go ahead of them. I said, no, I'm going to wait until every person gets through 
hallelujah, then I'm going to go through. I'm not going to call anything. Right? The other spirit showed me an image of myself, hallelujah, falling down, dead, or dying in the line. I remember I reached right up to there was a man um, in front of me and a woman in front of him. Right? And I remember when it was the man's turn and it was just a woman left in front of me. I mean, the woman's turn was just a man left in front of me. I, I almost, this was the point, I almost literally, hallelujah, fell over. Because I literally felt like the spirit was leaving me at this point. And it was like, just tell somebody. I'm like, no. They say, you're going to die in this bank. I say, yeah, I'm going to die in here. But I, I ain't turning back till this is done. And I held it. He went ahead. She finished and I got to the teller. So when I went to the teller, I, my, my, I was sweating. Literally, dropless, that's what they call it, cold sweat, right? I could speak clearly, spoke and gave him my stuff. And he looked at my stuff and he was very expedient, stamped it, everything, gave him my money. I progressively felt less worse than the worst of the worst. I put my money into my pocket. Spirit says to me, oh, you're not going to take any other step. When you go out, you're going to, there's a taxi there, you're going to take that taxi. You're going to go to puppy, you're going to buy the things you said you were going to buy, and you're going to go straight home. I said, yes, Father, hallelujah, I'm going to do that. But I think the moment I step outside the bank, bad feelings, hell, is gone. Mm -hmm. The feeling of death is gone. Hey, this spirit, I say, yeah, go dead. It gone. <laughs> the taxi was right there. He said, puppy. No, no, he said, taxi, he said, papi. <laughs> he said, come. Right. <laughs> $500. I went there. I think I spent $2,000 on fruits. When I went home, I had a few fruits and some vitamin C stuff. <laughs> I never had anything else on that back. <laughs> I didn't need any of that stuff. <laughs> Literally, the fruits were there going bad. From I had those few fruits at night, I was like, I, the appetite. I didn't need no more vitamin C. I didn't need no more of that. <laughs> and I said, listen, don't play no games with me. And I learned to persevere in the spirit of God. And I know when I said a lot of people going to say, Jeremiah, I couldn't do that. But listen, I'm not tell you that your child, Hallelujah, is my child. Mm -hmm. That was mine. I believe that small voice inside of me that says, go, go and cash that check. Because it was an attack. That was an evil attack. And I stood up to that enemy and I persevered and we can transpose the money to any kind of value. And the greatest value is your soul. And if you're not willing to stand up to Lucifer and his kingdom for your soul, then I'm afraid you're way out of sync with your reality because it's your soul, it's your life. There's no greater power but the living God. But you should declare the living God so that power can become active in your life. So when they try to rub you out, to blank and zero and dust and try to block every avenue. You persevere and you say, Thy will be done on heaven as it, in, as it is, on earth as it is in heaven. No confusion. Yeah? You persevere because you are determined, even though everything before you says it's not going to be in your favor. God is not going to deliver you. The devil has your soul. You're in the pits of it. You're going to burn forever. Really, really. You are not almighty and supreme omnipotent omnipotent omniscient you are not right believe and declare that with everything in you i used to tell a client of mine if all you can do is take your hands out of the jaws of death are you going to be crying and looking around or are you going to be taking your hands out of the jaws of death you gotta persevere my people life is a beautiful experience but it comes with a cost and the cost is an understanding of truth and application of righteousness in that truth meaning if you keep doing the right things in sequence you break all conventions all manipulations all captivity spells yeah you will overcome the red dragon himself you will overcome the fallen themselves brother and sister yeah by the grace of the living god it's not a simple task but nothing that is worth it ever comes through simple effort mm -hmm. it's deep devoted, disciplined, continuous application of righteousness, of goodness. 
yeah, that overcomes the enemy. Stumbling block, be gone. Brother, sing before we get out of here. Hallelujah. Observe the Bible now. Christ's life was not no easy life. He went through many difficulties, especially in the last days. Absolutely. And he persevered, you know. Remember when he did a prayer the last time there, mm -hmm. before them come for him. It's an enemy. You know, and he cried blood. He him cry hard, you know. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And he him ball to God and say, man, take this from me, Father, you know. <laughs> How you know? The kind of devil that I try to interrupt his mission, you know. Mm -hmm. Cause through human feelings and emotions, you know. Wanted to think about himself there only. Cause you know nobody who know one just dead. You know so your death will come. Yes. And you just go stand there. At the moment of its arrival. You know? So it was off. So everybody who no the most I they must go take up for them own cross. Hallelujah. And follow him. The road might not easy, you know, but every step of growth. Yes. Because eternity we are aim for, you know. Mm -hmm. So if I just lick a hardship on earth, trials and tribulation. To make we be more righteous, more holy, mm -hmm. you know, we just need for us go through it, job, mm -hmm. go through him hardship, mm -hmm. him persevere, and then better come. Absolutely, Hallelujah. you know, David, go through him hardship, mm -hmm. money if I have to fight a giant, you know, mm -hmm. I have to fight King Saul, you know, mm -hmm. money I have to go through him things. You know, for him journey with all the women. Mm -hmm. He make him mistake. Mm -hmm. Ruth and Boaz. You see me? <laughs> but he was persevered and still do the right thing in you know, the last part, you know? Yeah. Righteousness, we are aim for, and perseverance. Abraham and you know? Rachel. Solomon. Yeah. You know? His wife, them deceive him or make him lead astray mm -hmm. with different gods and so. But perseverance bring him to in the last part. Samson. You know, Samson, you know? Many struggles that we go through. Many people in the Bible go through things. Even John the Baptist, <laughs> you know? Uh -huh. And how yeah. film that yes. take place. Yes. You know, the disciples, the apostles. Hallelujah. I remember the, the apostles, them goat. James, the brother of, of Yeshua. True. Yes, I. So, when they take up Christ. In prayer. True. Yeah. True. Yeah, yeah. When they take up Christ, you know. Stephen, stoned to death. <laughs> Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake. You know? Blessed are those who. Stand up for Christ. Yes. Because he must go stand up for you. Yes. <laughs> you see me? So there's many blessings in what seems like hardship. Persecution so, yeah. and them things, you know? A blessings in the sight of the most high. I agree with you. <laughs> I'm a proof of it. Because I would never be half the person I am in terms of the experience I'm able to like, understand. If I didn't go through the trials and the tribulations and becoming aware and also understanding when you see certain things that that's just the way things are because of the choices we've made. In the good sense, they don't only bring good, they bring resistance to the good, but it also brings good, but resistance to the good. So don't be fixed on the resistance because that resistance is your sign of, as you would say, the blessings, I always say the blessings, the blessings of our lives. Because there is a reward to the perseverance. I use the money as an example, because it's a real example. And it wasn't just the money, but it was to overcome warfare that has to do with what the enemy thinks is a gain 
for you and a loss for them. Independence, being able to make your decisions and stand by them is connected to wealth and ability in this world. So most times if a person is not on the grid or of the world system, they affect your material and they expect to break you by it. But brother, if I had learned from that, some of these schemes that I see them trying to do with me, I would not be able to still be here glowing. If I was a money gorgon, hallelujah, or a money gargamel, yeah, if I was subjected to the power of, of, of mammon, yeah, I wouldn't be hallelujah like this. So that was not just overcoming the attack, but conquering the power of mammon and conquering the power of what they can use money to do to you, dangles a carrot in front of you. That's what hold many of us down, you know. That's why many of us are not persevering in Christ, you know. Because we are afraid to go without or we're afraid to stand up and speak up for our own as a representative of the kingdom. You say, me I'm not a big large man, me not in a this, me in a that, so nobody not depend on my side, me not a friend in a high society. Well, I have Christ. I have you, have of here, hallelujah, as my father, my friend, my brethren, my savior. And it's not a figment of my imagination. So it's actual. And that's the difference between when you just have a slight belief and when you put your belief into activity. So that's the difference between the essence of perseverance and just being in wonder. Perseverance is that even though you're not sure, it's different from wonder because you have a direction to go. And even though you do not know this is the real way to go, you still will be moving in an affirmative direction. Maybe 10 steps down the road, somebody says to you, I think that you are going high mountain, this is the way to high mountain. That is the way to side mountain, right? But your decisiveness is what creates the results. So I could have been weak and allow every time money to come up, that it will have a power over me. And it goes for anything. It goes for relationships. It goes for our place in society. It goes for friendship. If you allow a lesser consciousness to manipulate you, for an end result that has nothing to do with your welfare but fear, these things are what you must persevere to overcome being in a relationship with a negative person, an abusive man, yeah, a dishonorable woman. These things you must persevere and overcome the compunction to be drawn to your lustful feelings, your weakened thoughts, your disenchanted beliefs. You have to have the spirit of perseverance in the Most High to stand up and decide that this moment I'm packing up my things and I'm leaving. And I'm not going to talk about what his mother says, uncle say, yeah, and I'm leaving this woman. And I don't care what my friends are going to say about my career and my moves towards success. Because if I don't make this move, my life will be completely without value. There are many things that manifest the spirit of needing to persevere in the spirit of God Almighty and the spirit of Christ. There's many things that challenge your very core. And if you ever... Let it take a step on of you. You will never get the upper hand and you will forever be a victim. Be like those Christians, those believers with their hands in the ear always crying, woe is me, woe is me. Right? They have no affirmative thought, no activity. Beautiful mongoose. <laughs> it's what they're nice, yeah. They have no affirmative thought, confidence in the spirit, no confidence in themselves. And that comes through experience. Do you get what, what we're saying? Ultimately, be focused and not just quit because of the first sign of resistance and things not going your way are things definitely going against you. The spiteful spirit is expressing the fact that you're on the path to victory and you might not know it as yet, but you are. So until next time, this has been the great old reasonings right here at the Trail Life, just reminding you of persevering in the spirit of God, overcoming all resistance in Christ. Yeah, in the presence of my co-host, Brother Raman Singh. Perfect love. Perfect love. Perfect love. Perfect love. Perfect love. Perfect love. Perfect love.